If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, hear this now, cleanseth us from all unrighteousness. You know why I'm going to walk with God? It is my umbilical cord. He is giving me life inside. And he is taking out the waste of my life. I'm free. I'm free. Praise God. I'm free. I wish someone would believe God's word of forgiveness and just shout it out loud today. I'm free, praise God. I'm free, praise God.
book of Proverbs. It has been said by many scholars that chapter 3 of the book of Proverbs is the best chapter in all 31 chapters. You see, we are principle-driven people. We are principle-driven people. When we live by principle, then life doesn't happen to us, but we happen to life when we are principle-driven people. When we are principle-driven people, we don't find ourselves in situations to have to decide where we stand, what we're going to do, how we're going to react. When we are principle-driven people, we understand before tomorrow ever gets here, this is how we will act. And so Proverbs 3 especially is an entire chapter given to principles of how we should behave as children of God. As a matter of fact, there are some very plain scriptures in the Bible that simply spell it out to us. No Greek or Hebrew is needed. No kind of explanation is needed when one reads Ecclesiastes 12 and verse number 3. No one has to drag a Greek or a Hebrew scholar in the room and say, tell us what these words mean. In Ecclesiastes 13, 12 and verse number 13, the writer just simply says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. We don't have to really study that out. We just have to obey it. Fear God, fear God, and keep the commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Can you imagine how simple it would be to live for God if we just all set out every day to fear God and keep His commandments? Can you imagine every pastor, Brother Williams, think about this for a moment, every pastor, if you're a pastor and you're here in this house, how easy it would have been to have been a pastor in the Garden of Eden. I mean, sermons would be very brief because all you'd have to get up there and say is, don't eat the tree. That was it. Don't eat the tree. Don't eat the fruit of the tree. You may stand, you may be dismissed. See you tomorrow. Don't eat the fruit. You see, living for God is not difficult at all when we simply obey the Scripture. Micah chapter 6 and verse number 8. Again, very simplistic. Micah 6 and verse number 8. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Proverbs 3 is jam-packed with all the stuff. Everything you're going to need, you can receive it out of Proverbs chapter 3. Think about the very first four, four verses. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep them, keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Look at these first four verses. We, we, we understand this in the first four verses of Proverbs 3. That we must be constant to our duty to live for God. We must be constant in our duty 
to live for God. He said, forget not my law and keep my commandments. They will be length of days to you. They will be long life to you. Now wait a minute, verse 2. Isn't length of days and long life the same thing? No, they're not. You can have length of days but not have long life. You can have length of days but only have existed in those length of days. But I'm so glad with God. He said, I came that you might have not existence, but I came that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. Isn't he our reason for living? Isn't he our reason for going on? Isn't he our reason for existing? Oh, precious God. He is our constant. He is our constant. We must be constant in our duty to live for God. Do you know that there's only one other chapter in the Bible that records the word happy twice? There's only one other chapter. Chapter 3 of Proverbs lists the word happy twice. There's another chapter in the Bible that lists the word happy twice, but Proverbs 3 lists, and I think this stands out because what a lot of people are looking for, happiness, they're not starting at the right place. You ever heard the old saying, you can't get there from here? You can't get to happiness from a bar stool. You can't get to happiness from a bank account. You can't get there from here. The only way you can get to happiness is starting with God's word. If you want to end up being happy, start in God's word. That's the only place that you can find happiness. <laughs> he, said, uh, he said, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Verse 3 said something about binding them around your neck, writing them upon the table of your heart. And then he said, if you will do everything you can. Can you imagine binding something? That was their duty. Put something on you to bind it. Bind it around your neck. Bind mercy and truth, mercy and grace around your neck. Be reaching out to tether yourself, to tether yourself to the things of God. Please, church, don't ever get in the mindset of untying yourself from God. Be in the mindset of tying yourself to God. He said, bind it around your neck. Tie it about you. You, you, you want it to go with you. Let it be. Let, let God's word be like the, uh, the dog tags they used to wear in the military. I, and I, I believe they call them that. And I hope I'm not being disrespectful to any of the military people here. But they, they, I've, I've heard them referred to as dog tags. And, and it, was, it had all, name, rank, and everything right there. And, and, and uh, it was always there with them. You know, that's the way we need to be with God's word. Put it around our neck. Come on, I, in case I get knocked out, somebody's going to be able to come by and know who I am. Tie it around your neck. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. You know, some folks, they always go through life at odds with somebody. They always go through life trying to think, I'm the only one here trying to swing my way up to the top. Maybe it's because you've not started at the right place. Because when you get God's word in your heart and you tie yourself to God's word, you have good understanding and good favor with God and then with man. If you find yourself not getting along with anybody, hmm. I mean, if you got ten windmills on a hill and you're informed that one of them is broken, and you go out and all, there's nine of them blowing that way, turning that way. And you say, they say one of them's broken. And you look up on the hill, nine of them's going that way. And there's one in the middle going that way. I know which one needs to be fixed. All right? And so in life, if you go through life finding that you're always at odds with people, you need to make peace with God. And peace with God will put you in peace with people. It will. Verse 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. 
We must live a life dependent upon God because it's the only way to be safe. The only way to be safe in this world is to live a life dependent upon God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. You know, these pilots that fly these commercial jets and some that are not commercial, they, uh, you can get a rating as a pilot you can get a rating to fly a plane as long as you can see the ground. As long as you can see where you're at, you can fly. But, and, and then there are those that become instrument rated. And that means they can get up in a cloudy day and they can fly in the clouds. They can't see, they can't see the other morning. We were, we were, my wife and I were on a plane and, uh, we had started the descent, and, and I, I knew, I, I thought, man, when is this plane going to land? When are we, because it, it had, we had been going down for some time, and, and, and I looked out, and you just couldn't, you couldn't hardly, matter of fact, you could not see the wing. You couldn't see the wing of the plane, and when are we going down? And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, boom, there was the runway. Boom, we hit the, we hit the runway. And I told her, I have never been on a plane that did this. I have never looked out my way. And I couldn't see. I mean, the very second I saw the yellow strips on the runway, boom, we hit that runway. You know why we did? That man had been trained how to fly by an instrument panel. He didn't trust anything going on in his ear. He didn't trust anything going on. He knew how to fly by that. That instrument panel was telling him if, if the plane was leaning this way or that way or tilting. And he came in in a total foggy place and he landed that plane. You know, we need to trust God's word enough that when we can't see the wing, we know this is the right thing to do. It's, this is just the right thing to do. I don't feel like going to church, but this is just the right thing to do. I, I don't know why that this has happened in my life, but this, I think I'm talking to somebody today. This is just the right thing to do. Just try. It's the safe thing to do. It's the right thing to do. You know, we, we really heard a very sad thing that happened this week, and I, I don't know how it's going to change everything, but I'm sure there will be changes. But uh, <clears throat> that plane that crashed in the Alps, and uh, we found out later that one of the pilots got up and went out of the cockpit and the, co the, the, the other pilot had been suffering from some uh, uh, a breakup evidently with a girlfriend and some uh, uh, mental disorder. He locked that door. He locked that door and he flew that plane in a death dive right into that mountain. The black box records. The black box records the sound of that pilot beating on that door and frantically crying, let me in, let me in, let me in. You know, that's a tragedy everyone lost their lives. That's a tragedy that that happened. But can I tell you a tragedy that happens every day? We have allowed Jesus outside of the cockpit and we have shut the door and we're saying, I'm flying this my way now. I've got some pretty good understanding. I'm a, I'm a little bit bored with a Bible study. I'm a little bit bored with those antique relics at church that you keep talking about. I'm a little bit bored with all this stuff. Let me fly that plane. And we're destined, the Bible says, it is not in man to direct his steps. You don't have the instrument panel to direct your steps. You'll think you're going the right way. You're flying into a mountain, lady. You'll think you're doing the right thing, sir. You're flying into a mountain, sir. And all the time, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And if any man will open up, Come on, church. I wonder how much eternity we reveal from our black boxes. Jesus standing at the door saying, Let me in. Let me in. 
I don't know about you, but I want to tell my God, come on in, Lord. The only safe way to go, the only safe way to go is to trust in the Lord. Verse 6, 7, and 8. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel. And morrow to thy bone. Do you know the only way to be healthy? I believe most of all spiritually, but even physically, is to obey God's word. Isn't it amazing that he uses the word here? All your ways, fear the Lord, be not wise. Verse 8, it shall be health to thy navel. Do you, do you know that this is talking about when a baby is growing inside of the mother's womb, the umbilical cord that connects the mother's body to the baby's body? Do you know what that cord does? That cord is a supply. Do you know that that cord is taking nutrients that the mother eats and putting them in? That, that cord serves two purposes. That cord brings nutrients in from the mother and gives it to the baby. That's how the baby grows in that womb. But not only that, that baby has waste that must be carried out. And so that same cord that brings life removes waste. You know, God's word will bring us life. God's commandments will bring us life. But then God's word will take things out of our lives that are waste, wasted days, guilt, shame, all of those things do not need to dwell in the heart of a believer. But we need, an, we need a way to take that waste out of our bodies spiritually, the waste of a failure, the waste of a sin, condemnation and guilt of something that happened 20 years ago. Praise God, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, hear this now, cleanseth us from all unrighteousness. You know why I'm going to walk with God? It is my umbilical cord. He is giving me life inside. And he is taking out the waste of my life. I'm free. I'm free. Praise God. I'm free. I, I wish somebody who is battling with a sin you committed 20 years ago or, or maybe maybe later than that. I wish someone would believe God's word of forgiveness and just shout it out loud today. I'm free, praise God. I'm free, praise God. It's health. It's health. Hmm. It shall be health to thy navel and morrow to thy bones. Do you know inside of your bones new cells are being made to go through your body? Do you know inside of your bones your bones is just not a solid piece. Inside your bones is the cavity where new cells are being developed because old cells are dying off. And your body's got to keep producing new cells. And when he said the word of God is health to your navel and morrow to your bones, do you know that my bones are making cells today that I'm going to burn up sometime next week? Do you know I'm here this morning and I'm getting strength for things I don't even know I'm going to face? That's why when we're principle driven, hear me now, when we're principle driven, life doesn't happen to me. I happen to lie. You see, right now, Sister Fallon, by the word of God, Dad has got something going on in his bones that's going to help him later on. Spiritually, we're doing something on this Sunday morning. You know not what tomorrow may bring. 
You know not what. Sister Hazel Green had no idea that last Sunday when she sat in this auditorium that she would sit here a week later and have the plans for her husband's funeral. But I got news for Sister Hazel Green. Last Sunday morning, God was making something inside of her bones and giving her the power to meet what happened on Friday afternoon with the assurance that God is in control. Hey, I'm here to tell you something today. I've got to give my God praise for this. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to stop serving God. Something needs to be. For more information about the Apostolic Connection or First Apostolic Church of Miraville, Tennessee, visit our website at factv.org.